Hello friends, Naya Swami Hriman here, and we have a beautiful spring day, mixed clouds and sun as we overlook uh, Port Susan here on Kameno Island. So welcome all of you to our original lessons of Paramahansa Yogananda. And we are on lesson four in his course that he published in 1926 called Practical Metaphysics. Today's lesson is on prana, the life energy. But before we begin, I'm going to play a little recording of Yogananda's voice, urging us to go within. Hang on. Here we go. To make stars and earths and throws them away like that in the sky. He cannot be tempted by a little carbon cave called the big church. He can be called by the magnetic quality of your heart, the magnetic sincerity of your heart, the sincere prayer, and prayer after practicing Kriya Yoga, not to just run away after practicing. It's when you sit there. If you eat the dinner, run, run. If you have a little siesta, then you enjoy the dinner more. So when you sit still long time after Kriya Yoga and pray and say, Lord, 25% is my effort, 25% is Guru's effort, and 50% is your grace. Your grace is everything. You can free me any time you want to from this dream separation. Unite me with thy consciousness. I am glad to play in this dream and bring everybody but dissolution them of your terrible dream which they create into nightmares. I want this dream to be beautiful. With thee it is fun. Without thee it is anything but fun. So, everything that you do, do with the consciousness of God. You don't know why you came here. Why should you have your own desires? I want this and that. You can't help that. Modify your desires. You should have some things. Go after them. But Everything of one thing, and that is God. Every minute that you can think, just a singer hums a song, as the sex fiend thinks of sex, as the greedy man thinks of food. I remember there was a little... I'll stop there. He tells a delightful story about a little boy in his ashram at his school who uh, could never get enough to eat. And so Yogananda helped cure him of his food greed. And so today in Lesson 4, he speaks about the five pranas. This is, it's a curious course. I, I have paid more attention over uh, the decades of my discipleship on his other courses. This advanced course in practical metaphysics, I've read before, but not paid as much attention to. This one on the five pranas is only one page long and it says on here, outline notes. So it's as if he um, did some notes on a talk he was going, I'm sure he did give many a talk on the five pranas, but uh, somehow, and uh, maybe somebody was helping him put these lessons together and had some notes. But most of us in the yoga movement, most of us who have studied the uh, Raja Yoga techniques and precepts, know that the basic teaching is that prana is the life energy of the universe. And as he points out here in his lesson notes, we call it cosmic consciousness when it's in the, you might say, the macrocosm of the universe doing its work. But in the microcosm of, let's say, our physical body, it's spoken of as five differentiated functions of the life force. He points out that the life force is, uh, and uh, how do I put this? Or, well, the way he put it is that is, it's conscious, but not self-conscious. Now, that's, that's a curious way of putting things. In other words, in the Trinity, we have um, God the Father, Spirit, 
beyond creation. We have the ohm vibration, which is essentially life force, okay, the vibratory aspect of creation, the vibratory aspect being both invisible and visible. Think of dark energy, dark matter, uh, you know, uh, quantum particles and so forth, electricities, both fine and gross. These things are not visible to our five senses. And so we have the vibratory aspect of, of, of uh, the universe. And some portion of that vibratory universe appears to our sight, sense, hearing, taste, touch, and smell. And so uh, appears to be. Now, he wrote these things really before, uh, I think, quantum mechanics, quantum physics, etc., was very well developed. I mean, it was definitely underway during his lifetime, but I've never seen a reference uh, to quantum mechanics, quantum physics, uh, by Yogananda and his writing specifically. But in any case, the exploration of matter to the uh, quantum level has shown what the Vedas and the metaphysics has always said, which is that the world of appearances is an illusion. And so um, the rest of the world, whether seen or unseen, is essentially vibratory. That vibration is a power, an energy. It produces a sound, the sound of Aum. But that energy is also um, guided by the innate and eminent, meaning indwelling, intelligence. Now, so he uses this phrase, he, <coughs> cosmic energy, he says, is conscious, but not self-conscious. I don't think that means it's blind and dumb, like um, the grosser forms, like uh, electricity that we use in our homes, and so on. But um, it does respond to the circumstances in which it's placed. And the circumstances in which it's placed is guided by this indwelling Christ consciousness or indwelling divine consciousness um, that is the intelligence of the universe, the intention of God. So in any case, the five pranas relate to our physical body. I'm sure there's probably a macrocosmic relationship to or expression of these things, but I've never come across any description of that. But let me just read the five pranas. They are written, transliterated, I should say, and pronounced differently according to uh, different parts of India and so forth. But I'm going to name them first. Prana, Vyana, Samana, Udana, and Apana. Now, in this version, Yogananda's lesson, the the last A is missing, which, which is typical in certain parts of India. And so he did it pran, yan, saman, udan, and apan. But whether there's an A or not, here's, here are the standard descriptions of these five currents. Before I give that, though, and before I forget, the five pranas are specifically referenced in his Yogoda lessons in the first three lessons in which he teaches the energization exercises. And one of the important things that he says, important and finally practical <laughs> to us, is that the energization exercises, the 39 exercises, help balance the five pranas in our body. We often speak of the energy of the life force in our body as prana. But these five are sort of sub-dynamos, uh, sub-aspects. So the prana current, okay, the prana, not channel, but the prana current. Think of prana coming in through the medulla, coming to the brain, then the brain intelligently pulsing that prana down the astral spine, out through the chakras, and as, as the energy comes down the spine, like light going through water, it, it kind of slows down, or like light through a prism, it, it uh, bifurcates, is that the word? 
into the different color spectrum. And so as prana comes down the astral spine and out through the chakras, it, it has separate wavelength, separate um, wavelength produces separate sounds, separate colors, uh, and separate characteristics. The prawn current is that current of intelligent energy which crystallizes, which you could say makes things in the body, uh, crystallizes different organs with their different functions and so on. I don't, I'm not an expert or not even close in biology, but I imagine that the crystallization current could do something at least analogous to taking a stem cell and converting it into a specific cell, uh, like, like for the liver or other organs. So the prawn current in my mind, this is me, in my mind is more of the Brahma current, meaning it crystallizes, it brings into manifestations some th things that weren't there before. It's the creative current, the crystallization current. The next three currents are, to my mind, more of the um, Vishnu current. They help sustain, in this case we're talking about the human body, help sustain the current. So the Vyan current is circulates um, blood, I guess, uh, uh, is the circulatory power of life force in the body. Lots of things circulate, not just blood, of course, different um, uh, fluids throughout the body. So that ability to circulate, the motion and intelligence that moves things through the body, through their respective channels, is the Vyan or Vyana current. The Samana current is assimilation. And then the Udana current is metabolizing. I, for one, am not a student of biology, so the distinction between assimilation and metabolizing has always been lost on me. But I'm going to imagine assimilation is the first stage, and the second stage is metabolizing, which converts um, things into energy and nutrients in the body. Whereas the assimilation, I, I, I'm going to imagine that it breaks things down that come into the body, and then the um, metabolizing current will um, make those things into useful material. Okay? And then finally, the Apan current is the elim elimination current, and that would be sort of the Shiva, the, that which breaks things down and gets rid of it. And uh, we need all of those, all of these five currents. Now, students of Raja Yoga, when we learn our different pranayamas, we generally speak in terms of pran and apan, prana, apana. And we associate prana with the left side of the astral body with the rising current of, that produces the inhalation. And we associate the apan current with the uh, descending current in the pingala channel, uh, the pran being in the iruda channel and the apan going through the um, pingala channel and producing the exhalation current. So in those, uh, in that description of pranayama, of the relationship of the movement of prana in the body, in the production of breath, we only speak of the pran and apan currents. And so, um, uh, upon, of course, eliminating the uh, carbon from the bloodstream in the exhalation, the prawn current, introducing and assimilating, well, I shouldn't say assimilating, uh, introducing the oxygen through the lungs into the bloodstream. So, um, he doesn't really give much else. He... Um, he gives this distinction, which students might be interested in. He says prana means life energy, and there are two kinds of prana. Actually, there aren't two kinds of prana, but that's what he wrote. <laughs> You'll see what I mean. He says, A, the cosmic energy, the source of all living things, okay. And then B, the specific prana or energy pervading each human body. So I don't know that there are two kinds, uh, if you want to be into semantics particularly, but uh, different functions, the one being a subset of the other. In other words, they're not different, and, and he, I'm sure he didn't intend that. 
Um, but he does make one interesting statement I'll share with you. He says, but the life energy becoming uh, prana in the body loses this contact with the cosmic energy be, as it becomes more individualized. Then he goes on to say selfish, body-bound, and ignoring its cosmic connection. What's curious about this is uh, not the statement itself, which, uh, you know, in, on a psychological sense is uh, obvious, but that um, hmm, I had a thought and it escaped me, but the life energy loses this contact the more it becomes individualized. Well, that's a, I uh, had a thought. He said, energy is the missing link between consciousness and matter. So as our life energy, oh, I know what was striking me. I, I lost it there for a moment, is that we never really lose contact with cosmic energy. In the energization exercises, Yogananda talks about how through the agency of willpower, or in daily life, not just energization, exercises which are more conscious, but in daily life it's the agency of our will that draws energy in through the medulla, cosmic energy, as he, he describes in the lesson. So we this energy, which he also describes as not self-conscious, may lose contact with cosmic energy, but in one sense, kind of a mechanistic sense, we, we never lose contact because it's the source of our energy and it's always flowing in through the medulla, etc., as described to us. If we were to lose contact with cosmic energy, we'd be dead. And that's precisely what happens. So um, there's sort of some curious phraseology here in this lesson, and it's rather sparse. It's the only lesson, I think, in, his, in the whole collection of lessons that um, is only one side of a page. So five pranas, okay? Memorize them, okay? The pran current crystallizes, and the apan current is eliminates, the beyond current is that which circulates, the samana current is that which assimilates, and the udana current is that which um, metabolizes. Okay, I don't know how practical that is, but uh, it is interesting. Okay, now um, tomorrow, let's see, today is Wednesday, tomorrow, Thursday, Padma gets the wonderful topic of reincarnation. And that's several pages long and some very good points that he makes in these original lessons. Okay, keep the currents going. Pranaho. Joy.